Welcome back to MongoDB Local from the Big Apple in New York City. This is a developer fest. Really excited to have Damian Ang here who's the Senior Vice President of Technology at Anywhere Real Estate. Damian, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here today. Uh, so our Chief Engineer, Brian Hang, just delivered a speech on a breakout session. And a lot of our engineers actually joined today's session as well. Oh, so nice. Really happy. Tell us more about Anywhere Real Estate. Many people might not be familiar with, again, your role there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we are Anywhere Real Estate and probably one of the largest we are state services organizations that uh, you don't know, right? Because we are actually the parent company of the world's uh, largest uh, real estate brand. So we are the parent company of Better Homes and Garden Real Estate Services. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. A lot of people didn't know that. Absolutely. Stan G21, Cochrane, Coa Banker, Yahoo, and Sotheby International Realty. So, again, you may not have heard about us, but you still have heard about our brands. Oh, absolutely. In your role as the head of technology, what do you Yeah, so uh, I'm the SVP of technology. So I basically lead what I call product development for the organization. So uh, we build tools, platforms, and solutions for our agents and brokers so that they could be more productive and help our brand to differentiate themselves in the business. Uh, I have the engineering team as well as the architecture team and op obviously the operation organization as well. So basically... Um, the person responsible for delivering like solutions. So the real estate industry is going through a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw the digital transformation. We saw the direct to consumer. We're seeing you know big changes in commission structures mm -hmm. and things like that and pressures. So, how? What are the drivers in your industry and how has that affected your your technology strategy and subsequently your stack? Absolutely. So. Obviously, with the real estate industry, I've been going through, like you said, a lot of changes. But I would look at it as a, first of all, it's a century-old industry, right? It's one of the oldest industry in North America. But then if I look at it, as I see there are three key things that uh, is driving change. One is, up until right now, uh, I would say still right now, it's very human paper focused, right? So a lot of folks who have bought and sell houses may still be doing wet signature on, did, on kind of like, uh, signing their contract or signing their agreement, right? So it's very human-driven, very paper-driven. And part of the second issue is that because of how fragmented things are, uh, we are having a lot of what we call point solutions. So if you're a real estate agent, you need to do a listing agreement, you will go to one app or one website. You need to order the uh, marketing material, you go to another app, right? You sign agreement, you another app. So what is happening is that every single agent or broker end up having, I don't know, 10, 15, 25 apps to do their day job. And there is what I call the collateral damage or the consequences of it, which is as us, the technology team, try to help them, we're not build things to wrap around that. So a lot of complex data integration, and um, we end up having multiple source system for agent and listing information. So we need to build a bunch of MDM behind that. So second, I the third part is, like you said, the industry shift significantly faster in the last 10 ish years. So different business model like I buying, power buying that emerged recently, we begin to see, let's say, a lot of what we call agent teams. So before it's just individual agents. Now we need to do a lot of support for agent teams, large teams of agents that buy and sell stuff as a group together, right? And then we there are times that we need to work with like what we call the snowbirds. Like we have agents that summer in Chicago, winter in Florida, right? So there's a lot of different changes in both the business and the operating model that drive a lot of like the recent change and we need to shift our strategy as well. So a lot of this is a data problem because you've got data fragmentation all over the place and living in different apps. Uh, you've got a human labor issue in terms of it could be much more efficient. Yep. And then now you've got the collaboration mm -hmm. challenge. Yep. So let's talk about how you modernize uh, those applications. I, I assume Mongo plays a role in that. Absolutely. That's why you're here. That's so let's talk are, yeah. about how you're solving this problem. Absolutely. How you're modernizing. So uh, I think I would categorize into a free track. Right? One, uh, very many companies with our size, we do the same thing, which is go cloud first, go cloud native. But since our company have been around for a long time, there are many things already on-prem. So a lot of our new apps, they're full cloud native, like cloud first. But then we also modernizing a lot of our existing app to the cloud, right? So when I say cloud, what it really means is that I want most of the things to be like platform as a service. So when we say we use Mongo, I would double down and say we use Atlas, right? We don't want to manage Mongo, we want to use Atlas. 
So cloud first is the first thing. Second is that... Can I interrupt you? Yeah, are, please. Are you, are you doing on-prem, like uh, EA, Mongo, or no? No. All Atlas. All okay. Atlas. So right. please carry on. Absolutely. Right. So uh, second part is we want to modernize our experience. So I talk about a lot of point solution. So we make a strategic in, uh, move investment to focus on what we call a persona-driven experience. Agents, key stakeholder, key persona, one experience, not like 15 apps, right? our broker, right? our title officer, like each of them will have one experience. They can only do their work in one experience. So we try a lot to integrate a lot of these into individual experiences. So you contextualize the experience based on the persona of the Absolutely. individual using it. So you have a technology that does that. So it's a combination of UI, data, yes. uh, 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 authority, access uh, controls. So yes, all of the above. Uh, and then what we also recognize is that you know, when an agent need to do like different parts of a transaction, so they need to use like different tools and different aspects, right? So it is how do we have single experience do multiple things? And then the third part really is about how do we create a platform? So we spend a lot of time basically building, I won't call it microservices because they're a little bit bigger, but like services which are all isolated individual services, they're all obviously backed by Mongo as their new ones. Uh, we need to solve two problems. One is we have multiple monolithic applications on-prem obviously that host the same set of data. So we have conflicting data and conflicting business logic and two is that in order for us to run fast and react, we cannot keep changing. So we have solve a, like you said, a data consistency issue, but B, a speed issue, an option where how can I run fast to do that? So a lot of modernization is focused on like cloud platform experience. So a lot of your microservices, funny you were hesitant to use that term because a lot of the microservices aren't so micro. Exactly. Very big. Keep calling them micro. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, that's how you, you created for the on-prem stuff, you created an abstraction layer mm -hmm. that you can call those services. Right. And you really, everything to you is cloud operating model. Correct. Right. Okay. So you, now you've got the business logic mm -hmm. that historically has been locked into all these applications. That's right. When you think about AI, I'm interested in your AI strategy. Mm -hmm. As you bring AI to your data, can that logic mm -hmm. begin to live inside of the data mm -hmm. over time? And maybe that's the vision. Use AI mm -hmm. a as a way to unlock all that value that's stuck in those applications today. Absolutely. So I would say our AI strategy like evolved over the years, right? So we've been practicing AI for quite a while. So let's say we build AI model to uh, kind of like predict productivity of agents to help our recruiting team to recruit more agents. Uh, we build AI model to look at assigning a lead to an agent, what's the right fit to make sure that it's a good experience for the buyer and seller. So we're doing AI, but a lot of that are behind the scene. Now AI and Gen AI become super popular, super mainstream, everyone talk about it. Uh, our AI strategy shifts in terms of we want every one of our engineers, our technologists, to embrace AI as a solution to a business problem from ground up, right? So we don't want to go a top-down approach, but bottom up to solve very explicit business problem. Give you an example. We want to solve a business problem of building a listing description based on a lot of what I call uh, MLS data, right? We can have agents write that, but we rather leverage AI to write that for us. So there's a real business use case, a real business value. Uh, another good example is we'll use AI to enhance uh, what we call lead generation, where when you submit information, I want to talk to an agent, a lot of times your information is incomplete. So we use AI to augment a lot of them. So they're more ready for an agent to engage, right? So a lot of time is how do we have explicit business cases where the AI become an enabler of it and we can see outcome and double digit growth on some of these uh, business value and tracking. So since the AI awakening in November of, of 2022, we've certainly seen from the spending data that, that AI, which was actually losing momentum, mm -hmm. shot up as Absolutely. of November 2022. And other sectors of technology spend have been somewhat mm -hmm. suppressed. We've also seen that around 40% of the customers tell us that to fund their AI, they're borrowing from other budgets. Has that been your experience? Uh, Yes and no, because what we try to do is we try to fund the business problem, right? We don't say, hey, we want to fund AI, right? We will say we are funding to solve business problems. So uh, we basically say in some, let's say, hard coding a lot of business logic, we leverage AI, but we're still solving the same business problem. There are things that like you can't like do without AI. So for example, we have one uh, 
POC doing right now, which is we need to be able to have a stack of document on PDF and then break them down into uh, data, right? So you can do it human uh, or you can do it through AI, but you can't really do it programmatically. So there are things like that. But our funding model really is to make sure that we are funding the business case to solve and the POC to solve the business cases. And you saw the MAP uh, application uh, uh, initiative that... During the keynotes, right? That, yeah, during the keynotes. Absolutely. And so basically, if I understand it correctly, MongoDB is saying, hey, Damien, we're going to curate mm -hmm. this selection of LLMs. Yes. We're going to provide a lot of the you know basic infrastructure around it so you don't have to worry about that you know, using whatever, Amazon Bedrock or other tools. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Will you take advantage of that? Um, what are your thoughts on, on LLMs and keeping, keeping up to date with all the changes in LLMs? Would you... Is that something that resonates with you? Hey, I'd rather let, you know, Mongo curate that and I'll choose from the cafeteria of, of, of that menu that they provide. Or would you rather, as a senior technology person, get your hands deep into those LLMs? Um, I think as a pragmatic uh, technologist that want to kind of build value fast uh, for our company, I would typically, I would actually take advantage of that. I would take a deeper dive in terms of like what the Mongo partnership offering is about because to me, uh, leveraging, I would say, either open source LM or wholesale LM so that we do not need to do the hard work and tune it is probably a much faster path to value, right, than the other way around, which yeah. is like build everything from scratch. Time to value, that's true. Exactly, time to value is critical to us and how to build things fast. And what apps are you building on top of Mongo? Are you doing Are you doing RAG? What other apps are you building? So uh, I was, we use Mongo for primarily two wide purposes. One is Mongo, we talk, kind of talk about the not so microservices, right? So Mongo is the backbone of our new services, uh, basically become our transaction platform. If you look at our use cases, majority of our use cases is read with like very minimum like write. So Mongo actually is a perfect fit for that. So let's say, how do we have our agent API, our listing API, they're all individual isolated API backed by Mongo. So use case one. Uh, the second one is we leverage Atlas Search as our primary search engine for our real estate website. So yeah. if you go to cowabanker.com, uh, you search for, hey, what's the um, available houses around this area? You Filter you're it. And you're yeah. basically hitting Atlas Search at real time to return the search scenario to you. So I would say we use Mongo Atlas primarily for those two purposes. What about Vector? Are you, are uh, you so? Good use, question. I see that you actually talk about that. Yeah, today, are you right? going to use uh, Mongo Vector? Do you have a separate vector database? So we have done both. Uh, so we have done two pilots. One is a separate vector database, and we are also partnered with Mongo on the vector. So you use like a Pinecone or a Milvis or yeah, something? Yeah, something similar, right? Basically separate from Mongo, but we also partner with Mongo. We've just finished a POC to use vector database because um, embedding the vector directly in a document, it seems to be a lot more uh, cost efficient and speed yeah. compared to a or the isolated or decoupled vector database. One less thing to manage. Right, and what we're also trying to do very hard is to make sure that with vector, because what we want to do is how can vector enable a much better search experience, right? So let's say we always get in a situation where uh, especially international. So you are moving to America, right? You want to look for a house, but the lingos are different, right? So you're like, I, I want to look for a bungalow or flat. In American term, you may actually be looking for a townhome, right? So I think in, instead of making the very explicit semantic, using Vector actually help the search experience significantly. That's the potential we can see and we're looking forward to it. But like we're doing POC, Mongo is a great partner to help us do these POCs and uh, I think it's a really good, good journey. I mean, we always love to get the practitioner perspective because you're on the front lines mm -hmm. and you know the technology. Really appreciate you coming on the Cube. Thank you. Really a pleasure meeting you. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back after this short break. You're watching MongoDB Local on the Cube.